Hi everyone, welcome back on another episode, Aim High Club, it's your ultimate guide for an educational tour of aviation. On my recent research proved that the understanding of dangerous goods has given less priority in institutional levels, whereas the focus mainly based on the well-structured modules. And working in the aviation industry, I find it quite important for us to keep up to date with the latest of uh, dangerous goods because we handle them each and every single day. So, let's start the topic today, the dangerous goods in aviation. The importance of dangerous goods is very vital in the aviation industry as we had past incidents related to mishandling of dangerous goods which resulted in air crashes such as Valuejet crash in 1996 and the well-known UPS crash in 2010 in Dubai. So what is dangerous goods? According to our definitions, the articles or the substances which are capable of posing a risk to health, safety, property and the environment can be categorized as dangerous goods. And why is it important to know about it? Because of the vulnerability of the assets can be at risk. And what is the good thing about dangerous goods? It is all classified under classes and divisions. And what is the bad thing about it? It can easily slip through your judgment. And that's the reason why the ICAO technical instructions recommend that the recurrent training to be completed within 24 months to ensure the knowledge remains same. There are 12 categories of dangerous goods according to uh, 63rd IATA, IATA Dangerous Goods Manual published in 2022. However, an approach of a new training program called CBTA, the competency-based training and assessments, will be introduced probably with the next edition. So, what are dangerous goods? There are nine classes depending on the nature of the hazards and some classes further divided into divisions due to the wide scope of hazard. Here's the list of nine dangerous goods classes. Class 1, explosives. Class 2, gases. Class 3, flammable liquids. Class 4, flammable solid. Class 5, oxidizing substances and organic peroxide. Class 6, toxic and infectious substances. Class 7, radioactive materials. Class 8, corrosives. Class 9, Miscellaneous dangerous goods. One thing to remember always, class 3 and class 3 has no divisions. However, class 1 has 6 divisions. Class 2 and class 4 has 3 divisions each. And class 5 and class 6 has 2 divisions each. Isn't that easy? To help you in your recurrent training or the fresh based training, some may find some difficulty in navigating through the DG manual. So let me quickly summarize the sections in DG manual. Section 1, Applicability, where you will find the regulatory authorities for sea, air and road mode of transportation and their training requirements. Section 2, Limitations, to find out how much quantity a one can carry, state and operator variations, passenger flight or cargo flight, or carry-on baggage or checked-in baggage, or completely forbidden. Section 3 is the classification of dangerous goods. Remember, 9 classes, 16 divisions. Section 4 is the identification, where you get the list of dangerous goods and we call it blue pages and elaborate instructions of each type of dangerous good. Section 5 and 6 about packing and packing specifications, where you get the yellow pages. The three types of packagings are UN specific, limited quantity and the other packaging which is non-specific. Section 7 is about marking and labeling. The two types of labels are handling and hazards label. Remember, hazard labels are diamond in shape and the handling labels square or rectangular in shape. Section 8 is documentation where you get the shipper's declaration, legal declarations and documents. Section 9 is handling where you get the storage and loading instructions, compatibility and compatibility list and the not of detail. Section 10 is radioactive materials, the articles which can emit harmful uh, radiations which can only be detected by a specific machines that indicates the level of radiation and we call it transport index or TI. In section 10 you will find the type of radioactive categories and how to transport them and what documents to be prepared. Now I find it little difficult in finding the references and I came up with a bit of ways, so I hope that will help you too. Now, whenever you get a question about a, a, a restriction into a country, you immediately refer to page 37 on the DG manual. If you don't have one, just refer to section 2.8.2, the state variations. Look for the country on the question they're asking and look for the restrictions looking for. 
Similar to that, if the question is about an airline, refer to section 2.8.3, the operator variations, and look for the airlines that uh, the question is asking, and uh, check for the uh, restrictions looking for. And also there are a few tables you need to keep in mind to answer some of the type of questions. Table 9.3.a, segregation of packages. Table 9.1.a, acceptance procedure, whether no talk required or not. Table 9.5.a, whether pilot and command should be informed or not. Table 10.9.c, separation of radioactive materials for passenger aircrafts and cargo aircrafts. If your primary area of operation related to any part of DG handling, most of your answers can be found in section 9, which is handling, such as damage or leak packages, storage, compatibilities, loading of live animals, wheelchairs, dry ice, replacement of labels, contaminated packages. So your first point of checks should be start with section 9, which is handling. Another type of question for category 7, 8 and 10 is the completion of tables using the DGR section 4. To help you in completing the table, there are two ways. Number one, if your shipping name is provided, turn to your blue pages and start look for your shipping name in the alphabetical order. Remember to cross check the right shipping name as if there can be another description with a slight different in letters. Number two, if your UNID is provided, turn to section 4.3, numerical cross-references, and start look for your UNID in the numerical order. Find out the shipping name and the blue page number. Turn to your blue pages and start look for your shipping name. Once again, remember to cross-check the right shipping name. If the hazard and handling label identification can be a challenge for you, this chart will help you in identifying the IMP codes, relevant class and divisions and the category of the hazard, and different types of handling labels and markings used in packages. This can be downloaded from the link provided in the description. When it comes to radioactive materials, the minimum vertical separation applied for category 2, category 3 radioactive materials and the questions related to radioactive materials for DG Category 7, 8, and 10 can be three types. One, identify your actual distance. Two, identify your minimum separation distance. And three, to decide whether the package can be loaded on board or not. The scenarios can be two types. When a single package to be loaded, the transport index and the height is given. Step one, is to find the actual distance. For an example, in this case, 1.60 is the height of the hold minus the height of the package, which is 0.15. Then you get the actual distance, 1.45. Step two is to find your required distance using the transport index. Same example, transport index 3.0, where the minimum distance is 0 0.70 meters. So the package can be loaded without any restrictions since the actual distance is much higher than the minimum distance required. When there are two or more packages of radioactive materials to be loaded together, the transport index must be added together and the vertical separation required must be for the total sum of transport index as given in the table 10.9.c. If the vertical separation for a group of two or more packages is not sufficient, then the packages need to be horizontally separated in the hold by three times the separation required for the package with the largest transport index. So I hope this vlog got some instructions related to your fresher or recurrent DGR training of category 7, 8 and 10. Though it's a wider topic to discuss, I try to minimize the best possible way from a student perspective. And I'm sure you will have some questions down the line and I'm more than happy to assist you if you write to me. Once again, handling of dangerous goods comes with a great responsibility and you need to make sure there's nothing goes beyond the safety of human being and the rest of their sets. So if this vlog brought you some knowledge, you know what to do. Aim High Club is always educational, informative and entertaining. Looking forward to see you on another episode. Until then, stay safe. Stay strong. Hey.